So, a lot of times, we tend to say we got knowledge of self and we know who we are and things of that nature. You know what I mean? But what is that based on? Who we are or who am I? You know what I'm saying? What is that based on? A lot of the times, that information is based on outside information that comes from another source that's telling you who you are. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, we identify with it because it just fits the reality that we live in. You understand what I mean? It just fits the condition. It fits the environment and so on and so forth. But the question is, is really, who are you? Are you are you those things that you have been taught that you are? You know what I'm saying? Are you these things that you have been taught that you buy into, that you tell yourself and that you repeat to others that you are? You understand? Is that who you are? You know what I mean? Because a lot of times, I don't think we know who we are. You know what I mean? I think that we mix up the idea, you know, like the idea of our character traits, our personality with who we are. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not talking about those surface things. I'm not talking about what you like and the clothes you wear and, 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 you know, your favorite sports and your favorite color and your, your favorite cologne or whatever. I'm not talking about those things. I'm asking you, who are you? Matter of fact, I'm asking you, what are you? Those are two questions that you need to examine every day because the self is an infinite study. I'm going further into this because I spoke about this just a little bit in, in another video, but this needs to be talked about a little bit because, see, a lot of our problems are based around a solution that exists that we don't realize exists. The solution is always here. Inside of any problem lies the solution. You understand the problem is the solution in reverse, in a sense. Yeah, you know I mean, so we have to begin to shape our reality by looking at things from a different perspective. And you can only do that when you know who you are. This is why I always say you have to be the most important person in your life. And I don't mean that in a negative way, regardless of your children or whatever. You have to be the most important person in your life, because when you write, when you're right, Everything else around you is right. And when you not, everything else around you is messed up. That includes your children, your household, whatever. So you have to be the most important person in your life because there are things that are connected to you, extensions that are from you that are connected to you that fill through your example and so on and so forth. So you must be right. So that means with in order to be right, you have to know who you are and what you are. You understand what I'm saying? And who you are and what you are is not what someone has told you you are, but it is what you have experienced. You know what I'm saying? To know that is what you are. See, sometimes a lot of the information that we have been told that we buy into, we haven't confirmed that information to our own selves through a spiritual, you know, reality or experience with the divine that has confirmed this information that you are. You, you know, a deity or whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Those things can't be known until there's some infinite experience that happens between you and the infinite. Some type of real live experience that brings you into that particular reality so that you know who you are and what you are. But on top of that, we begin to look at that question from a surface perspective. Many of us, I could ask a simple question, who are you? And you can give me some some old crazy breakdown, high science breakdown. But then I ask you, OK, how many bones you got in your body? You can't answer me. See, the bones in your body is tangible at that particular point. That's real. Your breakdown was your understanding of something. But the bones in your body. They're there at this particular moment. You understand what I'm saying? And you don't know how many exist, but you know yourself. That's a very surface part of yourself. You see where I'm going with this? You know what I mean? What's the smallest bone on your body? I don't know. What's the biggest organ? I don't know. So that's what I mean. You can, you can, you can, you, you can know who you are in theory, but don't even know who you are in just a basic breakdown. You understand what I'm saying? So on that note, we got to really begin to examine who we are and what we are. And there's other ways that you have to look at yourself astrologically. You know what I mean, you have to look at your, you know, your, your psychology, your emotions, your mental state, your spiritual, physical state, your etherical state. You, you know what I mean, your electromagnetic state. All you got all these things to examine within the self to know who you who you really are, because the body is just a vehicle that you're using. But the body is. 
the vehicle because this is what you get the experience through. So, you know, you have to respect this vehicle, too. You understand what I'm saying? So this is a part of you. This is the this is a part of you because the you is using this. You understand? And if you're using it, you're supposed to know what it's composed of and how it works. Also, you understand what I'm saying? So a lot of times we don't know who we are. We think we do, but we aren't examining really who we are. We have to move beyond the surface and get into the inner workings of who we are and what we are. And then you can answer that question with a whole different perspective. And you can actually answer that question because you know, not because you've been told. Who are you? 